Okay. How many people uh, in when we when I did our photo assignment last time, you know, you took 35 pictures. How many people got 35 <coughs> perfect photos? Raise your hand if you got 35 perfect photos. Okay, I know it's handled. That I understand that makes sense. It should be that way, right? And 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 part of the reason for that is uh, one, um, we still haven't entirely learned exactly how to control this camera. And a lot of the times, we use automatic settings on the camera, automatic exposure modes. And we allowed the camera to make choices for us. And purposefully, in that photo assignment I had you guys do, I put the camera in situations where you had conflicting variables. And so when the camera is going to make choices on things like what aperture setting to use or what shutter speed setting to use, when you have conflicting variables, Although the camera has its own little built-in computer, that computer is not as smart as you are. And so it makes bad choices. So what we're going to learn over the course of the, the next couple of sessions is how to take good photos. In particular, how do we make changes in our camera? How do we make the appropriate setting changes to make sure we get good pictures? But let's first talk about what makes a good picture a good picture. What are, what are the variables that we need to consider when we take pictures to make sure we get good pictures? All right, so I hear light. That's a good one. Write these down, please. These are important. One of the variables to consider is light. How bright or dark it is? Absolutely. All right, distance. How far away the subject is? That's also a great one. What else? Adele, I thought I heard you say one. Any other ones you guys can think of? All right, so sharpness or resolution. Contrast is a great one. What else? These are good ones. I agree with all these. Well, shutter speed will control light, right? Well, shutter speed is going to control the amount of light. Yep, that's one. Uh, so what we're going to, shutter speed is a control we have that influences these variables. Okay, so let's list the variables first. Shutter speed is a control that influences how much light, for example. Movement. Movement is a major one. Did anybody have any photos from that last photo assignment where the subject looked like they were kind of blurry or wavy yeah, because they were moving? Yeah. Right? So we're going to talk tonight about how do we how do we fix that? How do we freeze that motion? Shutter is going to be one of those ways. So motion's a variable. Motion, movement, yeah. So subject movement is one of those variables we have to consider. Any other ones? Um, okay, the focal length of the lens is one of those controls that we have that's going to affect the variables we're talking about. I'll tell you one of the variables that I want you to add to your list is depth of field, which the lens has a major impact on depth of field. Sure. Environmental conditions, right? So overcast sky, for example, actually can create problems. Rain is going to affect, for example, whether or not you use a flash or not. Can't use flash when it's raining or when it's snowing. All right. This is a pretty good list. So we said, let's just make sure we all have the same ones on our list. We have light right on there. We have distance, so how far a subject is away. We had contrast. Resolution, environmental conditions, depth of field, movement. Perspective is another one to consider. This kind of goes along with distance a little bit too, and it goes along with lens. Because sometimes if you're not careful, you can make things look bigger than they really are, closer than they really are, farther away than they really are. So perspective is a, is a big one. I am. All right. So now let's remind ourselves something that should already be in our notes, but this is a refresher. Whenever we go to take a photo, you remember there is a four-step process that we go through, right? And the, and the acronym we remember for that is FAST. F A S T. And the reason that we go through this four-step process is, as we make choices for each step we're going to have an impact on each of those variables we're talking about. What is F 
in fast. It's focus and focal length, right? So it's not only is our image focused and sharp, but also are we zoomed in or zoomed out? So the focal length, because we know that if we increase the focal length, it makes things look closer and bigger. As we zoom out, so we go to shorter, shorter focal lengths, it makes things look farther away, it makes them look smaller, but it also gives us a wider field of view. So we have a major impact on several different variables. When, we, when I said perspective, for example, changing the focal length has a massive impact on perspective. We're going to talk a little bit later. Changing focal length has a massive impact on depth of field, which I'll define for you later and we'll talk about later. So focus, focal length, that's F. A is what? Aperture. 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 So we're talking about how wide open or closed down the aperture in our camera is. What variables would we affect by opening or closing the aperture? Certainly light. Absolutely light. Because if I open up the aperture farther, that's going to allow more light to come in. I could inadvertently open it up too far, in which case now my pictures are going to be what? Way too bright. Again, the term we use is overexposed. Are there any other variables that opening or closing the aperture might affect? Not color. Resolution. Not resolution. It will affect depth of field. It will affect depth of field. Now, there's another control that's not really part of the FAST, but is affected by A and S, which does affect resolution and those other things, and that is ISO. And we'll talk more about that as well. So when we talk about increasing or decreasing the sensitivity of the recording medium, it also has an effect on resolution. So we're going to talk more about ISO too. But getting back to our FAST, F is focus and focal length, A is aperture, S is what? Shutter, shutter speed. What is shutter? What variables is shutter going to have a major impact on? First and foremost, what is shutter speed? How quickly that shutter opens and closes going to impact? The amount of light. So if you remember, the shutter is like a door or window. Most of the time, the shutter is closed. It's only for that brief period of time when you take a photo. When you push that button and you snap that photo, the shutter opens, allowing light to come in and hit our recording medium. And then when we're done, it closes. So when you take a photo, that little snap or click that you hear, that's that shutter opening and closing. Now, the longer you leave the shutter open, the more light you're going to get. All right? If you open and close it too quickly, you're not going to get enough light. Your photo's going to be underexposed or too dark. But there's another thing that shutter has a major impact on. Those variables we listed, what's that? Movement. Remember I asked you before, does anybody have any photos where the subject looked like they were kind of blurry because of movement? Well, whenever your subject's moving, we have to choose the appropriate shutter so that we can freeze that motion. So then we start to see, and we're going to talk about this a lot over the next couple of the sessions, is... Every time you make a choice, you're going to see both positive and negative consequences. What is a positive consequence of leaving the shutter open for a longer period of time? More light. The positive consequence of leaving the shutter open. So if I open up the shutter to take my photo, right? The shutter opens up, allowing light to come in and hit my recording medium. That's great. That would allow me, for example, to take photos in darker environments, so like outside when the, when the, when the sun is set. The problem, though, is if my shutter is open for a long period of time, if my subject is moving, maybe swaying back and forth, now that movement is going to show up in my photo, and I'm not going to get a sharp photo where I freeze the motion. So what we learn then is if we have movement at all, the shutter has to be fast enough to, to freeze that motion. So the, the drawback, the downside of leaving the shutter open a long time is that you can't take photos of subjects that are moving. So in every choice we make, with shutter, with aperture, with focal length, with ISO, there are these positive and negative consequences, all of which we have to, as a photographer, to consider to make the right choice as to what is the right combination to use for taking a photograph in any one given situation. F is focus and focal length. A is aperture, S is shutter speed. What is T? Test. Test. So once we think we've locked in the, the appropriate settings, we think we, we picked the right aperture setting. We think we picked the right shutter speed setting. Before we take our photo, though, we're going to do a quick test to check. Because built into our camera is a metering system that allows us to, to measure how much light's coming into the camera to check for sure if we've got the right settings. 
First and foremost, though, out of all the variables we listed, contrast, perspective, resolution, can anyone tell me what is the first and foremost of all those variables that we must always consider? It's light. It's light. The discussion we're going to have next in our, in, in, in our discussion series is on exposure control. Whenever we talk about exposure control, what we're really talking about is light. When we say exposure, what we mean is exposing the recording medium to light. Right? When I think of exposure, working in policing, I, policing, I, I have a tendency to think about like criminal activities. Right? Think about someone who ran into a room, for example, and maybe they were wearing a trench coat with nothing underneath it, and they exposed themselves. Right? <laughs> so when we take photos, we're not exposing, uh, you know, someone's nude body, but we're exposing a recording medium. So a piece of film, for example, <coughs> in the back of the camera, or in our digital camera, what are we exposing to light? CCD. Yeah, that little microchip, that, that CCD or CMOS sensor that's in the back, right? And we have to control how much light hits it. Because if we allow too much light to hit it, our image is now overexposed, resulting in a too bright image, or if not enough light hits it, it's underexposed. All right, make sense? All right, let's start this real quick. 